Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor May J. Give a senior coming to you this morning and on the Wally Ministries at our Sunday school hour. Well, we do thank God for you joining us on this morning. We do uh, uh, we didn't have a ser uh, service on last Sunday. We were trying to get all of our facilities in place, and we're still working to try to get the facility in place for our move coming in 2025. But we thank God for your prayers and we thank God for all of your support. So uh, we got a beautiful lesson this morning, October the 6th, lesson 6 out of our King James Version of our Standard Commentary. Our lesson this morning is Lesson 6, uh, Prayers of Repentance and Confession, coming out of Psalms 51, verses 1 through 4, verses 10 through uh, 12, and verses 15 through 17. As we study this morning, our lesson aims is to be able to summarize uh, the circumstances that led to King David to write this psalm and then interpret Psalm 51 uh, through the lens of uh, King David's experiences from repentance and forgiveness. And then we confess and repent of personal and corporate sins in our own personal lives. Uh, so we'll get upon our uh, uh, reading our text this morning, then we'll have line upon line discussion. After that, uh, we will get into our uh, discussion of our lesson. So let's read this morning Psalm 51, verses uh, 1 through 4, verses 10 through 12, verses 15 through uh, 17. Our lesson reads this morning. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and, uh, uh, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou that thy mightest be justified when thou speakest, and clear when thy judges. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold with me thy free spirit. O Lord, open thy my mouth and lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O Lord, O God. Thou wilt not despise. Beautiful lesson this morning. Again, as we study we would like to get up in line upon line, discussion of our text, and then we'll see what thus says the Lord this morning. So let us get into our uh, introduction. Our introduction, the need for confession. You know, it says in the second grade uh, that the class held a end of the year pizza party, and the teacher told them uh, that there was just uh, eat enough pizza for each student to get only one piece, and a slice for each one of them. As the party ended, I snuck the last night, and I ate it without telling anyone. And what I did not know was that another student was not yet eaten. And so when the boy had came and get the slice of pizza, there was none for him. When the teacher asked who had eaten the extra slice, I kept my mouth shut. And the silence grew, and the sadness on the other boy's face, and overcome with guilt, I raised my hand and I confessed that I had uh, done it. And I apologized to the other student and the teacher and the whole class. I was worried that all would be upset with me. Instead, uh, the boy hugged me and told me that he forgave me. My teacher encouraged me by uh, for telling uh, the truth and to being honest. And my relationship with uh, my teacher and the classmates were restored when I confessed my wrongdoing. And although the experience was trivial, it taught me a very important lesson about the need of confession and repentance. Mm -hmm. And before we can have forgiveness and healing in our life, we need to have an awareness of our sins mm -hmm. and the admission of our wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. And today's song gives us an example of such. 
In our lesson context this morning as we study, our lesson comes from Psalm 51, uh, a lament psalm. And this type of psalm focuses on the uh, psalmist's remorse, confession of sin, and request for forgiveness. And the psalm's subscription of tribes to authorship to King David. Mm -hmm. Psalm 51 was composed uh, after a particular heinous and tragic series of events that is in his life of David uh, as the subscription notes. And the psalm endures uh, as a model of confession, restoration, and praise. And these events are not uh, recounted in Second Samuel and occurred while David was king uh, during his time. Uh, he was on the roof that day and he was watching Bathsheba the wife of Uriah bathed and then and he all of a sudden David asked for her. He finally slept with her, made her pregnant, and to conceal his actions, David sent Uriah to the front lines uh, to be able to be killed. But before that, he tried to send him home where he could sleep with his wife so that uh, that, that his a uh, relationship with Uriah's wife would not be noticed Come by on. her pregnancy. So however, David's scheme fell, and Uriah yeah. uh, refused to sleep with his wife, and mm -hmm. as that result, uh, he sent him to the front lines, and he was killed. And David's sinful action despised the Lord, mm -hmm. says in 1125. And therefore, the Lord sent the prophet Nathan uh, to convict David, of his sin. Rather than blatantly expose the king's sin, Nathan used this uh, parable, uh, this uh, story that he told about a poor man and a rich man, and the rich man had many sheep, and the poor man only had one. And then he told the story how this rich man took this poor man's precious lamb, he killed it, and prepared it for his meal for a traveler. And the rich man upset treatment of the poor man infuriated David. Nathan then revealed the parable's point. David was like that rich man. Although Yay. the king was exceedingly wealthy and yeah. powerful, he took that which was not his yeah. to take. Yeah. He killed Uriah the Hittite um, with the sword and had taken his wife. And upon hearing Nathan's words and being convicted of his sin, David confessed his wrongdoing and proclaimed, I have sinned against the Lord. Amen. So as we look at our lesson this morning, first of all, we want to discuss his confession coming yeah. out of Psalm 51 verses 1 through 4, needful mercy. Mm -hmm. He starts off the psalm saying, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness and according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Uh, the Hebrew word here, loving kindness, it occurs in the Bible almost 200 times in the Old Testament and varying in translation, but it sometimes means what? Mercy. God's merciful kindness. So David is crying out to God. He's confessing his sin, and he's asking God to have mercy on him because of his transgressions. That one sinner's death asked God for forgiveness, but he also, he confessed his sin. Mm -hmm. He said, blot out my transgressions. And then he says in verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Mm -hmm. This verse here talking about parallelism. He, said, he, he followed up from his complaint in the first verse. And then he follows up again in the second verse, letting God know that he has sinned. He said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and then cleanse me from my sin. Amen. He's admitting his sin. He's asked him to blot it out. Then he asked him to wash it. Then he asked him to cleanse it. Yeah. So David's transgressions was like a stain on a garment that needed washing. And once you get dirty, the only thing that can get you right is you need to have a cleansing, ain't it? Yeah. And God, through his Holy Spirit, has the power to cleanse us. Yeah. And then David in verse 3 says, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Mm -hmm. David asked to be cleansed, but because of he knew his sin that he had committed. For a person to acknowledge sin can be painful sometimes, but it must happen. Yeah, you must confess yeah. your sin 
in order for you to be forgiven of your sin. Yeah. And God is faithful to forgive us of our sin yeah. if we what? Confess our yeah, sin. Bet. So here he's confessing his sin. He said, I acknowledge yeah. my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Amen. So David said he was stained by this sin and he needed to be cleansed in Amen. order for to get in the right relationship with God. See, we're not being cleansed for our own. We are being cleansed so that we can get back into full fellowship with God. Amen. In order for to have that right relationship with God, no sin can come before him. Mm -hmm. But not only did he say no sin can come before him, what he did, he prepared a way where we could come before him yeah. by being washed in the blood, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. He said, well, against me, uh, only against thee, oh, thee only have I sinned yeah. and done this evil in thy sight, Amen. that thy mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He says, against thee, Lord, only you, Lord, I have sinned. See, sometimes... Yeah. Uh, I think I've sinned against my wife. Uh, I said something to my wife that was uncommon, that was unacceptable. Uh, but the thing about it is, not only did I sin against my wife, first of all, my wife, God told me to love my wife. Mm -hmm. Treat her like uh, Christ, God treats the church. Amen. Christ treats the church. So he wants me to love my wife. So uh, when I sin against my wife, not only have I sinned against her, but I sinned against God, Amen. the commandment of God. He said, against thee and thee only yeah. have I sinned and done yep. this evil in thy sight. Mm -hmm. So we know God don't have eyes, but we understand that anything that done in the presence of God, he usually tries to explain our humanity. We see, but yeah. God doesn't have eyes, but he sees all and he knows all. Amen. But he says also that you might be justified. The Psalms describe God as this all-powerful, all-knowing judge who is in his righteousness will judge the behavior every one of us. And because all sin is ultimately directed against God, his judgment against it is justified. God has a right to judge us because he made the law, amen, ain't it? Amen. When you go down to Rustburg or Camel County, you are facing the judges of the county. Yep. They have every right in the county to judge you based on the law. Yeah. So God made the law, ain't it right? Yep. So he has every right to judge you uh, in the relationship to the law. David yeah. knew this, and he prepared to accept all of the consequences of his actions. Yep. And the Apostle Paul quoted in verses and a uh, half verse in Rome when he stated that he said, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man is a liar. And it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sins and might overcome that thou art judged. So God is there to restore us, but in order for to store us, we have to confess our sins. Amen. Be faithful to confess our sins before him, and he is faithful to forgive us. Yes. Let's look at restoration, part two of our study. Clean my heart. He goes down to a very memorable verse that we're always quoting. Verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. See, this verse continues. David began, uh, not in our text today, but he turns for his profession of sin to his request for a renewed relationship. Mm -hmm. So when we sin, we confess our sin to God, but we don't want to stay there, do we? Nope. We want to have God to renew us with a clean heart yes, and renew yes. the right spirit that is inside of us. That's what we really need. We need change and a transformation. I think Paul says, be transformed not by the renewing of your mind, but by your heart. Ain't it? you got to have a heart change. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. we got to have a mind change and a heart change yes, in sir. order to be in alignment with the word of God. Amen. So he said, cast away from me, from not, cast not me away from thy presence, and not take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen. Old Testament, Amen. talking about the Holy Spirit. They used to call it the Spirit of God. But then when we get into this dispensation, we call it the Holy Spirit. So here David in the Old Testament is relating to the what? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. He said, don't uh, let your presence, your spirit, uh, uh, do not let it come from me. Don't take your spirit away from me. Because yeah. your spirit is how I find life. 
Yeah. It's because of the spirit of God that is in me mm -hmm. that I know my well-being and that I have life. So don't take that spirit away from me. This is the only verse it says in three verses of the Old Testament that has the title Holy Spirit. It says that his spirit of God is what controls us and guides us. So I need his spirit in me in order to keep uh, me from myself. Amen. If it wasn't for the spirit of God in me, I would be victim to myself. Yeah. So the spirit of God needs to be in me to control my thoughts and my mind so that I can know how to be like God. Yeah. See, I'll never know how to be like God until the spirit of God in me teach me how. So he says in here, to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and, and uphold me with thy free spirit. David's sin had caused a, a separation between him and God. And, and at one time, God's salvation led David to rejoice. And however, his feelings of joy had been replaced with grief because of the presence of God, of David's sin. So yeah. David recognized that he uh, could not experience this transformation through his own power. Mm -hmm. He needed God to provide the support to uphold him. David had already acknowledged God's role in transforming him and strengthening the bond in their relationship. Mm -hmm. See, if God don't, won't nobody do it, ain't it? Amen. Huh? If God don't do it, ain't nobody going to do it. Nobody. God is the one that will bring you back in the right relationship with him. Ain't that, yeah. ain't that something? The only way that you can get in right relationship with God is through God. And, and through his son, what? Jesus, Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, part three of our study. From my lips. Verse 15 says, O oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. David said, because of your mercy and your tender loving kindness and your forgiveness, Lord, now I'm going to praise you. I'm a, he said, open my lips, open my lips and my mouth so that I can show forth your loving kindness. See, so many of us, when God blesses us, we get quiet on God. But when God blesses us, we should be able to open up our mouths, give him praise because of who he is. God is a merciful God. He says, show forth thy praise so that my lips can be able to give you glory. Then hear part B of our study from a broken heart, verses 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else will I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God is what? A broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise so he, he, he goes back in the Old Testament and they were making sacrifices. He said, I reject your sacrifices because your heart ain't right. See, but before you bring anything to God, make sure your motives, your attitude, and your heart is right. He said, that I, you don't desire sacrifices or else I'll give it. If I could give you a sacrifice to, to, to offset the sin that has been in my life, I would do it. But he said that he told uh, uh, Saul in our text, he's in our discussion today, he told Saul to go and kill all of the Amalekites. Yep. Animals, women, children, and everybody. All of a sudden, Saul left the virgins alive and he left the cattle alive. And he told God, I kept the cattle for you. And God said, I want obedience more than sacrifice. You need to obey what I instruct you to do. Don't tell me that I left the animals alive so that I can make sacrifices to you. So you're going to sacrifice animals to me. Don't disobey what I instruct you to do. Mm -hmm. Think that's something? Mm -hmm. I'm going to disobey what you instructed me to do, but I'm going to make sacrifices to cover up that. So to kind of show you that I'm, I'm for you, God. All no, right. he said that I want obedience above sacrifice. Yeah. He said, thou delightest not in burnt offerings because sacrifices of God is what? That broken spirit, that contrite heart, one that, that, that knows that he has sinned and, and he has a God that is merciful enough to forgive us of our sins. That's the God that we serve. God is there for us and only he want us to come. He said, Thou will not despise me if I come with a, 
a, a, a, a, a contrite heart and, and yeah. a broken spirit. When I come to you right, God said he will not despise us even though we have sinned. Amen. We came to him. We were sinners, but we were washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus and by our confession and our profession that we made. We were made right with God because he is a merciful and a forgiving God. Amen. That's the type of God we serve. In our text today, as we look at our conclusion this morning, the power of confession, regardless of the sins that we might commit, David's words in Psalm 51 provides us with a model of the acknowledgement, confession, repentance, and praise when we have sinned. We first acknowledge our sin, take our ownership of our own actions. Then secondly, we must confess our wrongdoing and repent. Repentance is what? Crucial and it's necessary as aspect of every Christian's life. And then through our confession, we are healed from the power of sin and receive forgiveness from God. If we confess our sins, the Bible says he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But not only that, but to what? Cleanse us yeah. from all unrighteousness. Yeah. And finally, because of our confidence in God's promises, we praise him for his mercy toward us and demonstrate that through what? Forgiveness toward others. When, uh, uh, when wayward Christians follow this model, they can experience the joy of living in a relationship with God, a joy to be shared with others. And hopefully as we uh, look at this text this morning, our morning message, hopefully we will talk about how we need to have that love in our heart to live in this life that we are in and to enjoy all of the blessings that God has in store for us. So our prayer this morning is merciful God. Your love and mercy is great. And you as a people, we want to be in the right relationship with you. We confess that we have not loved you or others the way we ought to love. Mm -hmm. We repent of our sinful actions and humbly ask for your forgiveness. We praise you because you have promised to cleanse us from our sins and give us a life of joy in the light, right relationship with you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. We pray amen. amen. So our thought this morning is to acknowledge our sin, confess our sin, Amen. repent of our sin, and praise God for his forgiveness and his Amen. mercy. God bless Amen. you this morning. Amen. We'll be back in a few with our morning worship. And we thank God for your love and kindness and continue to pray for our uh, moves that we're going to make, our new facility, uh, for our business and our worship. God bless you and may heaven ever smile upon you.